This blue brick cottage is a great house to draw if we're just beginning our drawing journey and particularly if we're just beginning to think about perspective because there are a couple of very fundamental perspective issues involved here. There are angles and you see the way I'm checking my angles. Because I'm drawing with ink, I like to check them just before I commit with the pen. And if I'm drawing from life, I hold the pen up directly in front of me at the angle of what's in front of me and then I bring it straight down onto the paper. Now I've left a bit of a gap there because I can see that the steps come out and I'm not exactly sure where it's going to be. And I'm just putting in at the moment the things that intrude on the lines I want to draw. So there's a tree here, small tree here, or a large shrub that visually pops above the gutter in. So I wanted to do that before I drew the gutter in line. When we draw directly in pen, over time we get to feel almost the points where we have to stop lines rather than carry them through so that we can get a more effective capture of our scene. So you can see I'm working out where that top corner of the pitch of the roof is. But I can see that there are some leaves coming into our picture so I decide to draw them as well because I think that this tree in the upper left wall actually it goes it spreads right the way across the top of our scene. It really adds some interest to a what can be a fairly bland section of our drawing. But I don't need to draw the whole tree at this point, just the parts of it that are going to interfere with the, the lines of the roof. Now, with this two-point perspective view, on this side where the perspective is a lot more noticeable, where the angles are a lot steeper, the foreshortening also is more obvious. So although this door is, we know it's in the middle of this wall, if you look at the actual width of the wall here, it's further down the far end. And it's the same with the windows. Because as our building goes away from us, it doesn't just become smaller vertically, but it becomes smaller horizontally. So anything that's on the wall narrows more and more as it goes further away down the wall, whether it's windows, doors, or the spaces between them. So I just put those steps on. Now the ground here actually slopes downwards. And this is a great illustration for showing how two point perspective works when you've got a sloping ground. Because the perspective line is the one that is not on the ground level, but is above the ground level. And in this building, the stonework was different to bring the ground up to, if you like, a horizontal line for the brickwork. And that's the line that follows the perspective angles of the scene. And the irony is that the line for the ground, even though it's going downhill, the ground is going downhill, Notice that we actually draw that line upwards. It's above the horizontal plane. One of the little ironies of drawing. And I'm not going to be overly concerned with hatching, uh, with laying lines down to create value, to create shade and shadow, but I did want to put the darkness in the windows there because that helps to define the form of what we're looking at. We can show the white timber strips in the window, not by drawing them, but by drawing the shadows around them. So I'm positioning this roof now. This actual drawing ends up looking a little more complex than it need look because of the detail that I put on at the end. But in its essence, it's a nice, simple, subject for two-point perspective with nice clean lines and with actually very few details 
And if you're finding this interesting, why not hit the like button right now? Or even share the video with a friend you have who draws as well. And I know at this point that I do intend to give some indication of the corrugations, the rippling of the iron roof and of the brickwork. But overall, I want to keep the effect very light and very simple. And one of the great things about foliage is it is a great contrast, both in its shape, its form, the marks we use, but also in the values. And so we get this nice darkness on the far side of the house, which helps make the house stand out more, makes it easier to see and pushes it a bit closer towards us because now we're going to as lightly as we can with the 0 0.3 millimeter pen that, um, that I'm using, I'm going to try and draw very lightly to create the sense of distance. And as well as trying to lighten my line, I'm going to greatly lessen the detail, even the detail that I can see in the, in the reference photo. I'm not going to try and draw that. While this drawing took me less than 20 minutes to draw, the actual house took very much less. Just now adding the architectural details and then this is where I'm still looking to see where these chimneys line up with the things I've already drawn whether it's beneath them or to the left or to the right. I look at what it aligns to in the photo and if possible, if I've drawn that already, I use that as a reference point. And if I know that what I've drawn already is a little bit inaccurate, then I make allowances for that most of the time in placing. Here I come with um, some very thin lines to represent the brickwork and a few dots down the side, down the edge to represent the fact that there's often a little bit less mortar there and therefore it catches a shadow that the rest of the walls don't catch. Now I focus more on the horizontal marks than the vertical marks for the brickwork. And that's all I think I'm, I'm going to do. It really is just a suggestion. But now it's really clear that this is a brick cottage without it visually being, being loaded down or even wallpapered with a, a, a brick line work. Because that's not the effect we have in life. In life, we can tell that it's brick, but the brickwork is not visually a dominant part of our scene. So now it is time to put a bit more work into this tree. These leaves here are very much silhouetted, so a little more time with those, although they're still very briskly drawn, trying to capture their star-like shape. And the fact that we're noticeably drawing whole leaves tells us that these leaves are quite close and so it helps us to position the tree in the depth of plane these this branch and the leaves hanging from it in our overall depth of plane but although i'm doing more detail in leaves often than i end up doing i'm still just creating the effect of the leaves and i'm certainly not trying to draw all the leaves as soon as I can, I start to hatch rather than drawing outlines and filling in individual leaves. I start to hatch over a, a broader area. Although in this particular instance, there's not a great deal of it to do. And now these furthest trees and this uh, ridge line down the back, just a suggestion of all that. And so now there's the iron roofing, the corrugated iron, as we call it. 
just checking the directions, the angle of these. Now, the angle changes as these lines move away from us. Perspective does impact these lines. And so with this side of the roof, these corrugations need to tilt outwards towards the left at their bottom more and more as they move from the right hand side to the left hand side. And then just some little little blobs again to, indi to indicate the way the corrugations can catch the light. You're watching this at slightly less than double speed. So if you want to watch it slightly slower than live, just use the cog icon to slow this down to half speed. And you'll notice with this side fence, I'm just trying to capture the effect. Those rounded tops of the palings on the fence, I didn't try to match the rounded bits up with palings beneath them because it's simply the effect. Our brain will read that and know what it's saying. Keeping the detail in the foreground really loose because I want our eyes to really go to the house, not to get bogged down in the foreground. And then we have done it. A simple cottage, simple house in two-point perspective. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. hope this was, was interesting for you. hope it was helpful. I'll put this reference photo on my channel community page. So it's a great subject to have a go at drawing yourself. But can I suggest you don't copy my drawing because then you don't learn the creative thought processes that we need to know what lines to create and where to put them. But if you watch my demo and then you draw from the reference, that way you get to put into practice what you've seen and heard, but in the process, create your own ability to think out what marks you need to make. But look, whatever you draw, however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.